Hello everyone, my name is Dylan and this is The Tradition Show. We're here with some very exciting people and we're at Loveland Yoga Studio. We have Bobby and Anaviv here. So, and we also have Jesse. What's up guys? So this is The Tradition Show. This is a new segment we're doing. We're supporting local businesses and just getting out in the community and want to see what all of our community has such greatness to offer. So for you guys in particular, tell us a little bit about Loveland Yoga. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Anaki and I, we opened Loveland Yoga um, back in December. Okay. Grand open December 7th. Um, I've been teaching yoga in Houston since spring of 2014. Awesome. Oh, wow. And then um, I guess the start of 2019, we started writing some business plans for here. And I decided to make the leap out of working for the other studios. And yeah. Come out here and try to build something. That's awesome. That's really incredible. It's it's good to see what what really uh, invigorated your passion to yoga. What what was kind of the mindset for you guys once you um, got into yoga? You want to go first? Yeah, you can go first. <laughs> <laughs> um, I guess in college is when I first started looking at just okay like meditation and yoga, yeah. different spiritual practices. Okay. Um, and it's just something that helped me a lot. Yeah. Um, stress of being a student. Yeah, of course. Kind of the learning uncertainty of not knowing what I wanted to do. Exactly, um, yeah. You know, you just kind of jump into college like most kids, but you don't really know what you're doing. <laughs> yeah. And then just going down that path for a little while. Yeah. Come on, I just wasn't happy. I didn't want to. Yeah. I was studying engineering. Okay. <laughs> I wouldn't be happy either. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I enjoyed the science, but I, I just yeah. wasn't my end of the lifestyle at all. Um, and so... All through that, you know, started with kind of like Zen meditation and martial arts. Okay. And then it, yoga came a little bit later. Already. I guess I just got hooked. Right? You got hooked. Well, I could say the same thing when it regards to Yoda. Yoga. Yoda. Yoda. Y yoga. <laughs> so with yoga for me, it was like, it was uh, just a, a place where I could just kind of unwind, find that inner thinking, and then additionally just step away from what the any intermediate stress was and then coming to your guys studio in particular over some of the other studios i just it feels like a, a place away from home where i can feel comfortable when it comes to just enjoying my own meditation and having such great owners and teachers like you guys uh has been very helpful in helping me accelerate my understanding of yoga understanding my own personal body in regards to flexibility yeah. and additionally when it comes to just my overall fitness too um, i've recently had a transformation in myself in terms of understanding my health at a higher level whether it be from you guys or joe rogan or whatever yeah. Yeah. all the above it's it's about understanding that kind of transformation um, and yoga has been a big part of that um, and i've definitely missed it during kind of the covid corona thing so that's, uh, I'm really thankful for you guys and being such stewards of the yoga community. You took online classes. Don't discredit yourself. Oh, yeah. <laughs> a little bit, a little yeah. bit. Yeah. So, I guess in terms of the transformation, yeah. um, one of the first things I realized in yoga is how much is possible okay. in terms of transformation. Uh -huh. um, I guess I grew up playing like baseball and okay. snowboarding. Those were my two main sports. Oh, nice. Um, it was a very stiff body. Uh -huh. And just starting yoga, you start to see the flexibility improve. Oh, exactly. Um, and I think a lot of guys have it in their head. Like, oh, I'm just not <laughs> yeah. flexible. Guys. I want to be flexible. Um, but you know, as I got into the practice and I started seeing improving, I'm like, oh, okay, so I can get pretty flexible. Yeah, exactly. Quicker than I thought to. And so, you know, sometimes you just, you have this idea in your head of there's this one thing you think like, oh yeah, it's not possible. Mm -hmm. And as soon as you prove yourself wrong. What else have I been telling myself is impossible? Yeah. That's just not the case, though. Yeah, exactly. So, just it starts with one thing, flexibility, and then it just turns into belief. Everything. Yeah. That's an awesome mindset but when it comes to, well, whether it be in regards to fitness or just your business acumen as well, having that understanding of your mindset and, it, and controlling that to be, whether it be more positive or just looking at things in a different light gives you just a real opportunity to be comfortable in your own skin, I think. Mm -hmm. So that's super powerful. So when it comes to like yoga, is there certain trends that you're seeing currently in your guys' industry that um, are popping up or is there certain practices that you're seeing um, 
that you guys are you you guys are leaning towards or mm. so even in our own studio we teach different styles and yeah so bobby we're like a yin and yang couple <laughs> <laughs> Of course, yeah. <laughs> Powerful, sweaty. But I don't know, you just said that Bob's class the other day was really sweaty, so I'm like, yeah. Oh, it, was like, a bit, it was a little bit more humid. <laughs> um, so I honestly think it's it's the teacher as well, not just the practitioners, because the teacher is going to influence their style onto the yogis as well. So I teach like a power Baptiste inspired flow, and then I you know, transition to the Hatha, which is our lovely classic. Uh-huh. Of course. Kind of in the same mm-hmm. sequence. Yeah. yeah, I definitely notice similar sequences, and then it's uh, just different orientations, whether it be more abs or more stretching <laughs> or uh, just more back or whatever. I like how you guys focus on different muscle groups within the body, uh, depending on the day or what people are feeling within the class. So being adaptable to the and suitable to the, the client's needs. Uh, I really appreciate that. <laughs> and then as, as far as business trends, I think I first, when I first started teaching yoga, I taught for a place called Yoga One. Okay, yeah, oh, yeah. I've been there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. When I got there, it was still kind of like a small homey business like this, a mom and pop shop. Yeah. And I got there right as they were starting to, to grow rapidly. Okay. Um, the same year I joined the company, they opened three studios that year. Yep. Jeez. And then within the next couple of years, they'd open two more and grown to seven. Okay. Um, so I've kind of, kind of seen this curve where it grew from just like a small business, and then the trend was trying to get into the bigger business of things. Kind of more corporate oriented, bigger, mm-hmm. bigger, more, more stations or more business units, and then, and then just more corporate, I guess. Yeah, exactly. And especially when they got bought out by Yoga Works, okay, for like a giant chain across the country. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Saw that shift, but um, I feel like the past couple of years it's kind of yeah. reverting. I think yoga is one of those businesses that works better with a smaller operation. Yeah. Uh-huh. Because it's very much a relationship business. Um, oh, definitely. We can come in here, we know everyone's name. Exactly. Um, learn a little bit about everyone's story. And people just like having that space where they feel like really connected to the community. Um, exactly. And so, like, I, I broke away from Yoga Works. A lot of the teachers that I came up with mm-hmm. have broken out and kind of doing their own thing. So yeah. It's kind of coming full circle. That's exactly right, and uh, when, just to see the growth in your guys' business and how you guys have adapted during kind of the tougher times and having online, it's definitely appreciated and kept, kept me sane when it comes to <laughs> just seeing other people in quarantine uh, and things of that nature. Um, I guess when it comes to yoga, do you feel like there's ever uh, anything where some people get wrong about yoga? I know like sometimes people like, Initially, I thought this like oh, yoga is just for girls. Or do you guys see any kind of prejudice or anything where people like, what do people get wrong about yoga or just mis- misconceptions? Um, well, in that regard, I think we see more guys. <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah. I, I think that's funny. Of you, though, honestly, because yeah. you're here and you're leading and you're leading by example. Yeah. So, yeah. It's, it's, did you find it less intimidating to come because of Bobby or? Studio, no? Yeah, definitely. I, I think that's part of it. Um, and then I guess the underst- I just coming to know you guys as individuals uh, yeah. was just extra reassuring because you guys are so nice and inviting. Your hospitality is great. And additionally, oh, well, you know, I'll, I came through Taylor mm-hmm. and then uh, then just coming to your guys' studio re- repeatedly and doing my seven day yoga challenge. <laughs> it feels like that's so long Love ago, you. right? <laughs> Um, and then just knowing all the different instructors, uh, the instructors have been helpful. And additionally, just the, the knowledge that you guys have as yoga instructors in terms of understanding different muscle groups when I'm feeling like, oh, my hip is not feeling right or my sacrum is not feeling right. What was yeah. this? Who knows what the sacrum is before you started <laughs> yoga? <laughs> no, no, right? No. So I thought that's been very helpful. And uh, as I've been on my journey for just understanding my body and my health at a higher level. So I think that's been super helpful and uh, definitely taking down the barriers. Um, and when you go to some of the big studios where there's so many people, it's just overwhelming sometimes too, in terms of like 
And then also having a, a flexibility of like people's knowledge has been helpful, especially during flow classes in terms of, and not afraid to ask or, or having personal assistance when it comes to understanding the moves or not doing it properly has been helpful as well. And makes more, helps me with my knowledge and then also I think it helps other people too when it comes to that. So that, that brings up the, the question, what's a big mis like mis um, understanding or prejudice or whatnot about yoga that people kind of prejudge yoga for? Yep. I think you don't need to be flexible to start. Yeah. People are intimidated by that fact. Yeah. We're like, I can't touch my toes yet. Or yoga's not for me because I can't even reach my arms up all the way. Yeah. You know what I mean? Exactly, yeah. And yoga is to help guide you through that. You start, everyone starts somewhere. And I think it's being okay with starting somewhere. And, and we, I kind of like that we pride ourselves in not being intimidating and, yeah. and warm and inviting and open arms. Like, hey, you can't touch your toes, great, come. Come into my arms, we're gonna give you a, <laughs> uh, a distance hug. A distance hug, <laughs> right now a distance hug, yeah. A yeah. distance hug, and you know, we'll help you get there. It's uh -huh. okay where you're at. And, of course. And everyone should understand that even if you haven't ever been to a yoga class or you've done yoga on YouTube and whatnot and you're a little scared to go in person or you're intimidated, I mean, it's okay. We, we're here to, to help, <laughs> you know, we're, we're here to be inviting you to help you get to your toes. See, exactly. that's, that's awesome because that was actually my biggest question was like, what would you kind of tell beginners? Because for, for instance, like I told you guys before this, um, I have been doing YouTube and I've always wanted to go to yoga, yoga studio, like always. Yeah. But I always felt intimidated. Exactly. Um, so that's why I've been like doing it on YouTube. So like I, when I actually go, I can actually touch my toes and all that stuff. But yeah. um, so, what, I mean, like, what would you, what would you, what would your, be your advice for someone like me? Take her, come to Lola. <laughs> yeah, done. <Okay. laughs> My advice, um, you know, a little heat would help, you know, and if YouTube is how you're comfortable and you can start that way, that's great too. But honestly, coming with a friend too to class is, is also very encouraging. And then becoming friends with your yoga teacher, yeah. the owners of the studio, because we, we watch the students as they progress and we know where you're at. We, yeah. we can see that you've grown from point A to point B and what your goals are. And if your goal is to do a handstand or to go into middle splits or something, we can adjust your practice so we can give specific cues to help. So or even if it's just stretch and yeah. like attention release. Yeah. yeah. I will pay you all hundred dollars to see Dylan <laughs> do a handstand. <laughs> that's, that's, I can make that's, that happen. We're working. Well, that's, we can make that happen. That's, that's one of the goals. That's one, that's one of the goals I have. So <laughs> we're working on that. We're working on that. Uh, well, I think one thing too is when it comes to just the progression. One thing I've seen myself, I like. I thought crow was so far away. Um, oh yeah, I remember that. Yeah, the first time that <laughs> I was able to do crow it was such an exciting, exciting thing. And then now it's what's the one we were doing yesterday at the end of class where you have to put your oh, you, you kind of wrap your legs yeah. around. Yeah. Did you ask that? No, one with the ankle cross. Oh. Okay. <laughs> that one. So you have to like your arms are underneath you and you pick your feet up. <laughs> your, like, your ankles are crossed. That one's hard. <laughs> so what made you guys pick this area? Oh, this... man, that's a, that's a fun story. So Bobby and I, he, there's like commercial real estate websites, just like mm -hmm. HER.com. So we were on LoopNet for a good while. Just every night, we would just <laughs> scroll through LoopNet and be like, okay, is this a good deal? Is this a great deal? After we had finalized our plan, Okay, we're, we're doing it. We're doing it. <laughs> um, we had a, a commercial real estate <clears throat> agent show us a few spaces and whatnot. But what actually happened is, well, he drove around, right? So he was taking us through this area. I mean, one of the first things he told him is we just didn't get a lot of parking. Yeah. 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 Practicality. Yeah. Um, parking and visibility. I, I worked for the studio in Midtown, mm -hmm. and they had a pretty good location. They had to move down the street. Oh um, yeah. And then they lost like over half their parking. Yeah. Oh man. And then like every day students would come, oh I can't find parking, I can't find parking. And you know, you're trying to help them de stress and you know, they're just complaining about parking the whole time. So parking I mean traffic. Yeah. it sounds like something simple, but it's, it's tough to find in Houston. That was honestly one of the first things we told them. We want a lot of parking. Um, we want a lot of visibility. Um, and then we just like this neighborhood. Um, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
exactly. A lot of young couples, <clears throat> a lot of just young positive energy. Oh, exactly. Uh, new restaurants, right new location uh, in terms of off the highway. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right off Ella. That's awesome. Exactly. Yeah, and they didn't really have much like this around. So. Uh huh. Yeah. We drove down Ella, actually, and I turned to my right and I saw the building in front. There was nothing here. The only thing that was here was Les Baguette. Ah, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And the, it's like this beautiful glass building that's mm -hmm. easy to see, lots of parking, you know, like easy access, just yep. turn right on Ella. <laughs> yep, exactly. And then I was like, what about this place? Yeah. And the realtor was like, all right, let me make some Reach calls. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Well, one thing I love about this spot is like view rise of the sun. Yeah. Oh yeah, you're right. So as as I'm doing, I usually come at the six a.m. class. So. Because you're crazy. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I'm crazy. that's insane. So I come at the six a.m. class, and by that usually most of the time the sun's not up yet, and then as I'm doing my practice, uh, the sun is rising, and it's kind of a, I guess reinstills just. The, my journey for the morning and that the day has come and I've put my hard work in and it's one check off the box. Mm -hmm. Just an extra little bit of uh, motivation to get me through the day or the extra positive energy of, okay, that task is done for the day. Or I've, I've, I've indulged the body. So I think that's been really helpful too in terms of just having that too. It sets a mindset in people. Yeah, so I, think, I think that's powerful. When it comes to your overall arcing mission in yoga, um, is there what motivations or uh, energy do you like? Do you fulfill yourself with, or what? Uh, what uh, I guess at the end of the day, what motivates you to uh, share your vision of yoga, um, or what do you want to share with other people when it comes to your practice or your just the motivation? I guess uh, one of the first things is just providing people a space where they can just come and just be themselves. Yeah. Um, just focus on their own practice and open up. Um, I feel like we go around all day kind of wearing our different masks. <laughs> yeah, um, legitimately right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like literally. Yeah, actually, yes. Yeah. yeah. I think the word persona comes from uh, like the Latin word for mask. Yeah. Um, and so, like, yoga communities that I've been in over the years, I don't know, it's just a really liberating So we wanted an environment that's very welcoming to that. Okay, yeah, you don't have to look this certain way to do yoga. You don't have to act a certain way. Yeah. So just open up, be yourself, and then you know, your practice will flow from there. Okay. Um, so just yeah, really open, really welcoming. Just I like that. I like that. Human moments. I definitely agree, and it's 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 been a part of my practice of just understanding my flow, and then having the support with you guys there has been super empowering. I have a question for you guys. So we've been talking mainly just about how awesome this place is, you know, the, the awesome location, the awesomeness of everything. Um, what did you guys experience any failures? Did you guys have to go through roadblocks to, you know, to get to where you are right now, either, you know, throughout your career um, or just opening, just, you know, getting the doors open? So many. So many. Where do we start? I had a big failure before, before mm -hmm. Love Life. Um, I was in the medical field, and it just wasn't where I was. It wasn't just a happy place, and the body saw it every day, and that's why I left. Um, he was running an essential office. Oh, Ooh, it was. Yeah. I was in um, the field for about nine years. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> and then when you know you just like unhappy one time. And but you don't have the confidence to leave. Yeah. You know, Bobby was there. He was like, you know, you're not happy where you're at. And I, I view that as a failure, right? Because I was like, I can make this place succeed. We can grow it and we can be exponentially successful mm -hmm. monetary-wise, right? But emotionally and physically and everything else-wise, like, I was in the hole. I was just like, I can't do this. So I would wake up at 4 o'clock and be drained. I had to be by, at work around like, Wow. I don't know how Dylan does it. <laughs> I'm just not a morning person, baby. Yeah. Um, but I viewed that as a failure when I quit because I was like, man, I can't believe I quit. I've never envisioned like a, myself as a quitter. But then yeah. I learned from it. I was like, monetary value in something that you know is 
paying decently, is it worth my mental health? Yeah. Because I would just come home and I would like snap at Bobby. I'm sorry. <laughs> 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 they're not, they don't come to work every day, 365, like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it was like consistently, like, whoa, yeah. like months at a time. And I was like, oh, this isn't, this doesn't feel right anymore. You yeah, know? exactly right. And I think people get confused between quitting and failure, and failure is not, it's not the end all be all. It's just a step on everyone's journey yeah. of understanding what you want as a person or what you want as a business uh, professional. And within that, we're all going to have failures, whether you're not making the money you want, you didn't do that one task right. And at the end of the day, it's about, okay, I've learned from this. It's about learning from those failures and then moving on. And I think that's probably the most powerful thing. And I assume from that journey, uh, you've, you just got a more courage or you've become more understanding of what your personal identity is of what you wanted in life. I think that's super powerful. So learning good. to be okay to sit with uneasiness yeah. because like we had no mo- like I had no money going in and yeah. I always had of course you know that safety net of yeah. like okay I have a job yeah. <laughs> I have health insurance yeah. <laughs> health insurance is a big deal <laughs> yeah. yeah and that's entrepreneurship right hmm? that's entrepreneurship right yeah yeah, yeah. that's what we always so there's no manual for of course yeah. start this, <laughs> I mean Google helps but <laughs> Yeah. So you end up figuring out so much on the fly. Uh-huh. I don't know, you get stuck a lot. Of course. You, know, you just have no idea, like, literally what to do. Um, we got stuck writing our business plan. We were, it took us months to write that. Yeah. Yeah. We were just like, huh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so when you, so now that you guys have kind of, you started your business and you started writing your business plan, what, how did the business plan help you, um, come to a realization about your business or how did it help you see a vision within your business? Well, it was basically a roadmap for what we wanted. Yeah. Roadmap for like, what we needed. Okay. How much money we were going to need to you know, put the walls in, the yeah. theaters and all of that. Because you guys kind of customized the studio the way you wanted, or isn't mm-hmm. that right? Mm-hmm. And that, I bet that was a whole journey in itself in terms of working with contractors and, and that's a new New Holy new tool world. that you can add to your own <laughs> toolbox, right? Holy world. <laughs> they don't tell you how to do that at yoga teacher training. No, they don't? Yeah. That's cool. <laughs> Once you get your license, it's like, oh, what's this? We were like helicopter parents in that stage. We come, we would come every day, every single day. Yeah, that's your and baby. And the workers knew our faces, and they would be like, why are you here? <laughs> <laughs> I want to watch you. <laughs> I mean, I don't know if you watched our Instagram stories as we progress. It's still on there. Yeah. It's underneath um, the, a highlight. Oh, okay. You, you can still watch it. Cool. Oh, cool. From groundbreaking day, like uh-huh. you can see, we take video of like there's no walls. There's like they were putting in the plumbing line, and it was we would like <laughs> watch them like hawks. Like, yeah. <laughs> is that where the HVAC unit goes? <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. I don't know if most business owners do that though. Well, I think I, I think generally. I think most people do. I guess I, I would think most people do, especially as a newer business owner or a newer entrepreneur, uh, just getting into the field. I remember when my family, we got into the resort business, it was just the understanding of the industry of hospitality or the industry of tr- the, the tourism industry. Mm-hmm. And so it's learning those aspects. And then additionally, like we want this business to succeed. So we're going to be dedicate our time to it. We want to make sure everything's right. Mm-hmm. Um, and at the end of the day, it gives you that sense of accomplishment that, okay, this is, this is done right. We can put this down, move on to the next thing. So that's super powerful. Um, and we kind of touched on like motivation. Um, is there something that you learn from whether it be uh, 
uh, whether it be from a book or something you watched or even a mentor that was a good piece of advice um, that either inspired you or um, helped you through a, a problem or a hurdle? Mm. There's a lot of questions. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what comes to mind first? Um, we had a friend, Kevin, who just uh, loaned me his book, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. Yeah, yeah, very good book. And the first thing that popped into my head was it, it goes through the stages of how to be <laughs> I think about it, right? Yeah. Like I can write it down and try to manifest the idea, but it's it's so hard to actually physically do the work. I was just like, oh man, okay, mm -hmm. I'm gonna sit down. But I mean, it's it's different for me than it is, you know, for Bobby because Bobby reads all the time. <laughs> <laughs> well, one one thing that's popped into my head is um, so we also do Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Yeah, that's kind of our other main thing. Um, it's another thing I started in 2014. But yeah. The same time I started our coach Marcus. Oh yeah. Marcus. Well, coach Marcus. <laughs> so, more with GFT, which is uh, uh -huh. we're kind of known for like an aggressive, tough game. Okay. Jiu Jitsu. And one thing they just kind of yell at you all the time while you're rolling is like, just don't stop, don't stop. Yeah. Keep, up, keep going. Yeah. Um, so you kind of get that echoing through your brain. Uh huh. And so you know every single roadblock you know gives you a little bit of doubt or gives you a reason okay. to stop. Um, so maybe just having that echo in our heads. Try, try, try yeah. again. So, that, that's something I have in my head. Every single time a roadblock comes up, yeah. it's like, okay, we're just not going to stop. It's know? about finding it, whether it be keep trying different ways, trying a new approach, yeah. looking at a different perspective. Yeah. That's super powerful. You know, I think subconsciously I've absorbed that too yeah. because, it's just, because sometimes he says believe. Believe! <laughs> 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 when like you're like in the worst situation, he's just like believe! And sometimes in class I'll just randomly scream out believe! <laughs> yeah. And yeah, I think you just need ideas like that. Like yeah. Deep in your subconscious. Yeah, that's powerful. Like, I'm not gonna give up. It's always working in inside of you, even though you don't really realize it in the moment. Yeah. That, that's incredible. Do you have uh, for anyone that's looking to start a business or take the next step? Do you have any advice for them as an entrepreneur? Um, oh, man, well, going so back to the question. business plan, really getting it all on paper. Is yeah. Mm -hmm. A, because it gets all your thoughts organized. Yep. And then B, it, as soon as you have a good plan in place, that's when people really start taking it seriously. Yeah, of course. And as soon as you do that, then people just start coming out of nowhere to help uh -huh. you. Um, yeah, like people who help themselves get the most support. Of other course. People. Yeah. How? I would also add um, having a strong either partner or team yeah. really, really helps. Mm -hmm. Right, because there are, there are strengths that I bring to the table and there's strengths that Bobby brings to the table. And honestly, if Bobby and I weren't, like, we weren't a unit, I don't think individually we would be able to do it, right? Yeah. Because Bobby is financially, like, intelligent and he can, like, come up with the numbers and do the Excel sheets and all that fun stuff. And I can look at it and understand it and all that, but I lack the motivation to do it. <laughs> <laughs> But where things that Bobby, you know, wasn't so strong at before, like making all these interior decision designs, like yeah. he, he doesn't care about that. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what, what a thousand shades of white would you like to pick? Because there's like a million. The white ones. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, eight shells. But the, the point yeah. is, is asking and having a team or, or a partner to help you because it's a lot of work for just one person. So if you have like a partner or a team or a family or asking, because we also, you know, ask family for mm -hmm. help. We're just like, hey, um, how did you start? You know, yeah. just getting advice and whatnot. Like my dad, we, we used to own a chain of um, convenience stores okay. growing up. Yeah. And he would tell me about like rent. <clears throat> He'd be like, okay, you need to ask for like TI and specific things. And I was like, what's TI? I don't know. Mm -hmm. well, now I know it's called tenant improvements. <laughs> um, but like that's not common knowledge for everybody, of right? Course, and, yeah. and Google is a good is a good source. 
<laughs> Thank God for Google. Yeah, yeah. So I would say, you know, help, don't be so reliant on yourself too, but also if you need help, don't be ashamed to ask for it. Okay. Ask the dumb questions. Yeah, ask the yeah. dumb questions. What is TI? I don't right. know. What's triple net? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Yeah, you know, ask the dumb questions and don't be ashamed. You know, we're all going through this together. And if you are a little ashamed, it's okay. Just use Google, and Google will kind of get you there. Kind of gets you there. <laughs> but you know, having a strong partner for yourself, you're you're the rock in this mm-hmm. business. Yeah, you're the heart. <laughs> <laughs> we're both Google. We're both. <laughs> it's like building a house. You have a foundation, and then you have the structure. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's very good. When it comes to um, your everyday life, do you see yoga shining through outside of the studio or certain things that you do in the studio that give reference or um, kind of power through your life in, in some fashion? Sure. I mean, I had a yoga teacher. She always used to say, it's the way you do one thing, it's the way you do everything. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, and then, I mean, same as the example with jujitsu. Like, if you're practicing your yoga and trying to be more technical or more breath focused. Like whatever your focus is in your practice, um, it's like when you meditate, again, it's planting a seed in your subconscious mind. Yeah. And once that seed's there, it permeates into your regular thoughts, it permeates into how you move, even how you stand up and how you look at people, um, just kind of the energy that you shine uh-huh. out, the energy you attract. Um, so it really permeates everything. Wow, that's powerful. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. Um, when it comes to, like, outside of uh, yoga in itself, you guys mentioned um, uh, jujitsu. Is there any other hobbies that you guys partake in that you guys enjoy as well? Besides choking each other. <laughs> 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 no, I mean, yoga and jujitsu, those are kind of my two things. Yeah. Um, I mean, even, like, like I mentioned, like, in college, you know, studying engineering. Yep. So I, I was doing enough to keep up, mm-hmm. but I was also cutting class. Yeah. Do martial arts or go do yoga. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Um, I don't know, I just simplified. I didn't know that. Yeah. You would cut class? Yeah, I cut class. Wake up, No, I can't do it today. You, <laughs> you found your true calling, at least. <laughs> ah. You found your passion, that's um, powerful. Yeah, especially like when I first started teaching yoga, I was uh-huh. very much a minimalist. Like, yeah. My whole life fit in my sedan. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that's a fun story. When we first got together, we were, we first moved in with each other. He packed all of his stuff in a tiny uh, Lexus IS three hundred. <laughs> <laughs> his mattress, his clothes, <laughs> everything could fit in one car. He said, "All right, let's go." All right, we're wow, we're <laughs> ready to go. <laughs> yeah. So man, I lived for years awesome. like that, just minimalist. Yeah. And I had to have like a U-Haul. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I like the picture you posted the other day, too, in terms of the, uh, the older picture with you, with shorter hair and glasses, and seeing that transformation, I think that's very powerful, and the story behind that, and I think that's, that's incredible. And you found the passion, too. Yeah. You found something that, I think that's really what life's about, is about finding the thing that you're truly interested in, that you want to invest in, um, and just be a part of your life consistently. Yeah, I mean, it gives me everything, like, besides, you know, just the physical hobby. Right? Yeah. Um, connected with people who I really like just between those two communities so I get all the social interaction I need to feel fulfilled (laughs) you know I've you know both are a skill with you know goals that we're always reaching towards Mm -hmm. so you're always having that you know that direction in that way yeah exactly Um, with that I guess kind of talking about yoga and mental health how do you feel uh, yoga can help in that regard in regards to mental health or just someone's inner thinking or even maybe even depression or something like that? It's a good question. Um, One of the main themes of yoga is learning to let go. Yeah. Um, So like physically in your poses, um, it's like learning to let go of tension. Mm -hmm. Like if if you're in a stretch and you're just pulling, pulling, pulling on your legs, fighting with it, your body fights back. Yeah. And it creates this tension. You don't go anywhere. When you learn to breathe and you learn to just like let go, then all of a sudden things open up. And then the same exact same thing happens in the mind. Uh-huh. So if you're anxious about something, chances are there's some idea, some belief that if you just let go of that, mm-hmm. it relieves whatever's weighing on you. So yeah, it's getting in touch with your 
yourself in there, learning to let go of whatever thoughts or mm-hmm. whatever beliefs are making you sick. Yeah. So. I also like the idea mm-hmm. that yoga kind of takes you out of your thoughts and back into your body. Yeah. Versus always being up here where your thoughts are running at a thousand miles per hour. And even at the beginning of the class when we we start every class with like a short little meditation, I'll notice my own thoughts racing through my head like what am I worried about um, what am I going to eat for the you know, later today things like that like small things the same thoughts that I had the day before like I just keep thinking the same thoughts but immediately a few breaths in just using your breath takes me out of my head like I'm not thinking those thoughts anymore mm-hmm. and I'm focusing on my breath and I'm bringing it out of my head into my body Yeah. Right? so I'm not just here all day. <laughs> we spend all day here. I hear you. Yeah, we're on our phones. We're still here. Yeah. You know, you're looking at it. You're looking at the computer. Same, <laughs> same concept. So having space to like safely do that, where you can put away your phone, put away your thoughts for even yeah. for the first five minutes of class, or the the five minute shavasana at the end of the class, really helps you like softly let go, right? Because yeah. you're no longer thinking the same thoughts. It's a big realization to yeah. know that you're more than just your thoughts and your ego. Right. There's so much more within everyone. I guess with that too, it's kind of like the yin and yang. It's the mind and the body. It's the mm-hmm. what the and then contrasting with the spirit or however you perceive that. It's it's I think that's a very enlightening and good idea of like because I think when I came into practice is like well my shoulders are so tense or you're you have it in your mind in terms of like your eyebrows are always fringed or how yeah. what have you um or just not understanding that it's about just easing to relieve the tension that's powerful i'm ready to sign up so speaking of that though um you know where's the best place for people to kind of reach out to you? Is it Instagram? Because you were talking about Instagram, Facebook. What, what, what is it? Or just calling up here? So we're accessible through all ways. You can, um, our Instagram is at Loveland Yoga. Our website is lovelandyoga.com. You can email us. You can call us. Our email is heart at lovelandyoga.com. Our Facebook is facebook.com slash lovelandyoga. <laughs> <laughs> so everything is still Loveland Yoga. Um, and you know, reply pretty quick. Yeah. yeah. You can message us on Google. I have that Google Messenger thing for yeah. businesses. Awesome. Um, I've been answering those. Yeah, you can call. You can physically just show up, too. <laughs> yeah. The doors are always open. <laughs> right. Here. When you're here, yeah. Yeah, we're on the corner of 34th and Ella. Yeah. That shouldn't be hard to say. We've got yard signs out in front. <laughs> yeah. So like- do, you have, do you have classes all day? I mean, or is it just, I mean, throughout the day? We have classes all day, um, starting at 6 a.m. <laughs> it's 8 p.m. And we have oh, added wow. a, we summed up the schedule a little bit, mm-hmm. um, just the whole Texas reopening process. Of course. Um, yeah. But people are starting to come back. People are excited about yoga. So yeah. I think we'll fill up the schedule back to where we were um, pretty quickly. Yeah. Um, we're off on Fridays, obviously, right now. <laughs> <laughs> Can you kind of tell us about some of the practices that you guys do here, or different styles of yoga, uh, for those that may be interested in whatever types of yoga are available? Yeah. Um, one of our first main classes, uh, we call it the Loveling Classic. Mm-hmm. Um, it basically means it's a heated Hatha class. Okay. It's about 90 to 95 degrees. Um, oh, wow. The heat helps you get a good sweat. Uh, the heat also makes you more flexible. Um, it makes the poses just feel more comfortable. Mm-hmm. Help you progress faster. We usually steer beginners towards that class um, because the pacing of the class is more accessible. Um, you just kind of do, like you do this pose on the right side, this pose on the left side, mm-hmm. right side, left side. So it takes the transitions out of it. Um, if you come to what's called a flow class, that class is not just about the poses itself, but it's about the transitions and mindful movement in between the poses mm-hmm. with how they're linked. Overall, most of the poses are the same, um, but adding the transitions makes it a little bit of a more difficult class. Yeah. So, you know, maybe once they've done the classic couple weeks, they'll be like, all right, yeah, you can try flow now. Let's add the transition. Yeah. Um, but those are two main Vinyasa flow and uh, just that heated hatha class. Okay. And then at night we have a stretch class. Uh-huh. Um, it's very similar to Yin Yoga for anyone who knows Yin Yoga. Okay. Um, 
those are just all poses on the floor, mostly lower body. Okay. And those stretches are held three to five minutes. And that's the class where it's all about like, yeah, flexibility and learning to let go. Uh-huh. Surrender <laughs> your body. To just let your mind settle down. Yeah. So that's our slowest class. Um, maybe one of the most at least meditative. Uh-huh. In what people traditionally think of meditation. Of course, yeah. Sitting still. Um, but I mean flowing and getting just into that rhythm of movement. Of course, yeah. Meditation. Uh-huh. If that makes sense. Yep. Um, so those are our three main ones. Um, we have a couple of specialty classes thrown in too. Like yeah. I teach handstands on Saturdays. Yeah. So, um, there you go, John. No, that's <laughs> <laughs> the trendy Instagram. <laughs> we had an acro class pre-COVID. Um, it's a partner-based yoga. Yep. Um, You've been. I've been. been. Yep. I've You're been. a great base. Yeah, I'm a great base. Can <laughs> <laughs> you find me? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we'll bring back acro as soon as yep. people feel it's safe to start touching each other again. Yeah, right. Yeah. 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 It's our more playful learn how to trust the, the art of trusting your partner. Yeah. And if Trusting even people that you've just met mm-hmm. <laughs> for like the first five minutes because, hey, I'm going to support your entire body weight on this. <laughs> <laughs> but we changed that class um, for right now to, to Bobby's double diamond. <laughs> so tell them about your double diamond. Yeah, what's well. the, what's the, the, we're intrigued. What's the double black diamond? Uh, it's a float class where I just teach all of the hardest poses. Yeah. Um, That's good. It's, uh, most of our classes are all levels. Yeah. Uh, meaning whether you're a beginner or whether you've been practicing a long time. Yeah. Um, there's elements to the practice yep. where everyone can feel challenged and everyone can feel like they're working at their edge where they need to be. And that's mainly what I've thought over the years. So I'm pretty good at, you know, if there's 10 people in the room, you know, giving these three people this pose. Yep, exactly. You know, three people that pose, but still keeping everyone together. Um, <laughs> double diamonds where I just. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're going down that hill regardless. <laughs> You're at the top of the mountain. you got to find your way down. Yeah. Mobiles, that's fine. Just go straight through. <laughs> you know, we call it Double Diamond. Uh, we named Loveland Yoga after uh, the Loveland Ski Resort. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, cool. Um, so, have you been? No. I have not been there. Yeah. So it's something we've uh, done the last few years. It's something I've done my whole life. And he's come with me the last two years. Yeah. We go snowboarding with my grandfather. That's awesome. Uh, Stay with him in Boulder, Colorado, and he'll take us up to Loveland. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's 86 years old, and he's still wow. on the snow and up and down the mountain. That's really cool. That's awesome. And so, you know, he's just a great example of like what's possible when you keep yourself in shape and you spend your whole life getting mindful of your health. Yeah. Um, and so we took a lot of inspiration from that. That's really he's cool. so motivating because I, I don't, I didn't, I was a super novice. I still am. <laughs> going down the mountain, but Grandpa Bob, he's like. I don't know how he does it. He's like passing and weaving. He's, he's, he's 86, and I'm just like, what the heck? What? He doesn't ride as hard as he used to, but he's still smooth. He yeah. still goes Damn. really fast. I, it was really hard for me. Like the first time I went, I was really intimidated. I was like, what? How is this 86 year old man like <laughs> rolling down the mountain like it's nothing, like smooth as butter? And I was yeah. like, okay, well, if, if he can do it, he's really motivating. If he can do it, I can do it. And, he never fell. The, and how he did it is like, he's like, when he got tired, he would just like gracefully sit down and go, okay, I'm going to rest and wait for Anna to be here. <laughs> That's cool. That's yeah. awesome. That's very good. <laughs> well, I want to say to say thank you for you guys for being such stewards in the community yeah. and showing such great hospitality. No, thank uh, you for having us. This is really fun. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. So. Yeah. This is where we're going to wrap up our support local segment for today. This is Bobby sure. and Anna Vib at Loveland Yoga. Um, this is super enlightening, and uh, I love seeing you guys' different perspective and showing your your uh, business acumen and business uh, entrepreneurship. So thank you guys. Yeah. Thank and what what is your Instagram again? Oh, at Loveland Yoga. At Loveland Yoga, mm-hmm. and you're able to do just a class, or can you uh, sign up as a membership? Oh, so we have. Plenty, uh, super, super options. Um, super options. <laughs> you are able to take a single class. A drop-in is 20. But we do have a new student offer um, 
new student to the studio, not a new student in general, you can be practicing for, some, um, for years. And that's 30 days of unlimited yoga for $39. So Perfect. You, as long as you come honestly twice in that 30 days, it kind of pays for itself. Mm -hmm. <laughs> awesome, yeah, yeah, exactly. And then afterwards we have options. You can do a membership, which is unlimited. It's typically 100, but if you sign up within your your trial membership, it drops down to 89, and we do give teacher discounts of 15%. Um, and then we also have a 10 class pack, pack that never expires, 10 classes at your leisure for 160. And then our yearly membership, um, which I highly encourage is the most actual saving <laughs> wise, mm -hmm. is uh, yearly unlimited for 960. Oh, awesome. Cool. For yeah. sure. Yeah. I knew you do that 30 for 30. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's, that's, yeah. Feet, that's how I got back. Because I did yoga. I did a seven-day challenge like in 2009, 2018. And then I did that this year, 2020. That's where I really got back into it. So I capitalized on the, the monthly one. And then I have a full year of membership now. So it's, uh, it's good to just come to yoga and know that uh, I'm going to have my workout in in the morning and additionally have that space where I can relieve all the thoughts that I've been thinking about and start my day. So that's super powerful. And now you can bring Jesse. And Jesse's coming. I'm there. I'm there. I'm there. <laughs> Perfect. I think that's a good way to wrap it up. Yeah. So thank you guys so much. Thank you guys. Cool. Thank Happy you. Friday. Awesome. Happy Friday. Thank you so much for having us. <laughs> thank you everyone. This is the thank Tradition guys. Show. We want to thank so much Lovely Yoga, Bobby and Anna Veeve. They've been great stewards here and y'all have a blessed weekend. Enjoy. Definitely.